Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Scrap Secrets and welcome to Sketch Sunday. This week's sketch is going to come to you from my favorite things. There's my very crude drawing of it. And we're going to be using Hog Heaven Stamp and Die Set from My Favorite Things, which was one of the newest ones that I got. So I'm just showing you the dies and that I already cut them out of the paper. So here I used a Simon Says Stamp die and cut out this rectangle and then I put the fence piece over top of it. You can see I have the washi tape there. I ran it through the machine with the cuttlebug machine with the top plate just over the three sides of it leaving that fourth side open so that it wouldn't cut through and it would create a hinge. So now I'm taking an 11 inch by four and a quarter piece of paper and scoring it at five and a half inches to make the top folding card base that we're going to use. So now I'm just showing you the pieces that I cut out with the cuddle bug and we're going to pull out the misty and we're going to stamp them. So whenever I cut out stuff with the cuddle bug, I keep the die, the negative pieces because what I do is I line the stamps up in the negative part of it and then pick it up with my misty and then you put the pieces that you actually want to be stamped on back into the negatives and you get very good stamping results like that. It's easier to line them up. So I messed up a little bit on the back of the pig, but that's not a big deal. So we're going to be using My Favorite Things Black Hybrid Licorice Ink to stamp the images. And we're going to stamp them twice because the first time didn't come out so well. And the great thing about the Misty is that you can stamp in the same place twice and get really, really great stamping results, really crisp, clean images. So I'm just going to show you the front and the back of the pig here, and that's what it's going to look like hanging over the fence. So now you get kind of get an idea of how the card is going to look. So now I'm working on the other piece, the uh, fence piece, and I realized that that little flap there wasn't really going to work. I needed to tape it down, so I took some extra washi tape and held it into place while I lined up the fence stamp to just get that right. And it took a little bit of a try because it was sticking to the paper. I've never used these stamps before, so like you can see the paper there got stuck on it, so I had to redo it. Um, I think the closer you put the magnets to where you're stamping, the more the paper will be held down. And it's really kind of just a trial and error thing. But I ended up getting really good stamping results with the fence. So there it's stuck down, and then again I'm going to redo it because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I have some OCD, so I feel like I have to um, do these things over and over again. So now I'm going to ink it up with the same black hybrid ink, and that is great for Copic coloring, and that's why I'm using that ink. So I'm going to stamp it again a second time to make sure that everything comes out and comes out with a nice, clean image. I'm going to take the washi tape off the back of it, and now you can see the fence is all lined up. So putting the misty stuff away, Misty is one of my absolute favorite tools. The little um, magnets go on the back. It's great. It's compact. And I'm just cleaning up the stuff so that I can get ready to go to the next portion. So this hill was a piece of scrap that I had lying around from another piece. When you use the dies, they cut out on both slopes on both sides. So I just saved this piece for another card front. So we're going to use some Distress Ink in Mowed Lawn and Twisted Citron. And I'm just going around the edges with a mini ink blending tool to put the layer of green down on the paper. Really, I should have had a paper towel handy because the green got all over the place. And as you'll see, a little bit got into the sky, but it kind of creates a bluish green. So it, it didn't mess anything up, didn't create muddy colors, so I was okay with it. But you really do, my fingers do really tend to get inky when I do these things. And you really should have a bowl of water or some baby wipes handy, which I did not have. So again, just going over the piece and adding a bunch of color until it's a shade that I really, really like. And just going back and forth over the edges. That's the nice thing about Distress Ink. You can go over it many, many times and blend together until you get the look that you want more blending and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom of the piece that we cut out with a fence. So as you can see I'm just lining it up to see where how much grass I think I'll need and where it's going to go on the card. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm holding the door open just so that or the fence open just so that it doesn't really get on 
the front of the fence. I'm going to be calling it with Copic markers, but I didn't want any distressed ink on there except at the bottom. There's a little patch of grass and I kind of went over it as gently as I could. So it's lighter than the other pieces, but the grass on the bottom was covered with distress ink. So there you go. I'm, I'm doing that. I'm covering, coloring in with the distress ink, that little bit of grass that was at the very bottom. And eventually I'll go put a little bit more grass in there because I realized that the sky comes down too far. So we're going to be using tumbled glass and salty ocean to color the top of the piece, the sky. And I also wanted to make sure the back of it matched. So I'm also going to be doing the same technique on the front of the card. So this next part is really just some ink blending. For some reason, the tumbled ink blending foam wasn't really putting color down like I thought it was. Maybe it's just because the tumble glass is such a light color, but I didn't really think that it was going on very well. So on the background of the card, I did a, di a direct to paper technique and it gives a different color to it. So you're going to notice that when you put the when I put the two backgrounds together, the colors don't exactly match. That other piece kind of stands out. Um, but I like the way that it turned out. So the next few minutes are just just showing you blending techniques and you know going back and forth again same technique as the green for the grass just go back and forth over it to until you get the color that you like so that piece is done and then I'm just lining it up just to see where the grass is actually going to go I'm just kind of putting the card together and making sure that I'm happy with the way everything is just kind of putting the pig together so you, now you get an idea of what the card is going to look like. And this is when I realized that you're going to be able to see the when the fence opens, there's going to be a part of the background that you're going to be able to see. So I figured I would do the whole back of the card in the sky color just so that it matches. So now I'm taping off the back of the card with some just extra washi tape I had lying around. This will keep the color from going on the back of the card and just make sure I have a straight line at the top of it. I had an old dry baby wipe there just so that I could try to keep some of the distressed ink off of my card. That's one of my biggest things. I don't know if you guys have that problem too, but I generally have a very difficult time with keeping a clean work surface, and especially if I'm working with distress inks. I tend to get color all over the place, all over my fingers, all over my projects. So I need to learn to be a little bit cleaner when I work. But so now I'm just going back in with the tumble glass and it's at this point where it's not really blending out well. I probably should have done that first. So now I'm going direct to paper with the tumbled glass and it's giving kind of a marbleized background so luckily most of that is covered by the piece that I did before with the uh, fence on it so just going over to try to blend the colors a little bit better making sure that I have enough space I've colored down far enough for the grass and that's what it's going to look like when it's open so just kind of going over the edges a little bit just making sure everything is nice and colored and it's to the tone that I want it to be. Now again this was kind of a mistake it was a last minute thing I didn't think that I was going to do this and it wasn't really a mistake but it didn't come out how I had it planned in my head which most things usually don't uh, when I'm crafting. So we're going to start to put the piece together so that we can see what it looks like. I'm going to be taking my ATG gun and running tape on the back of um, both of the pieces. I There I fixed a little bit of grass. I realized that the grass didn't come up as far as I wanted it to on the fence piece. So now I'm attaching the grassy hill to the bottom of the card. And once I've attached it, I realized it's a teeny tiny bit longer than the card base, so I'm cutting it off. And to finish that edge, I'm going back with the green Distress ink and just kind of coloring in the side of it so you don't see the white core of the cardstock. Now, I'm going to be using Copic markers E15 and E18 to color in the fence. 
The first thing that I do is I color the entire fence with the lighter shade E15. And I know, you, sorry about that, you can't really see my hands in the way, I realize that. And uh, now I moved it so you guys can kind of see. I'm not doing anything fancy. I am not great with Copics. They are relatively new to me. Um, I've been using alcohol-based markers for a while, but not necessarily Copics. I've just gotten my first ones um, probably November, December time frame. So loving them and I know that they can do so many different things but again I'm not really skilled at them I haven't done much practice so now I'm taking the darker color and adding some shadows in so I kind of just drew lines above where the support beams are and then went over top of the grass because the blades would create a shadow onto the fence and then going back over it with the lighter color E15 to kind of blend some of that out a little bit Again, it's just kind of how I think it would look. I don't know. It probably isn't shading in the right places, but that's how I do Copic markers. I'm trying to watch people who do Copic colorings much better than I do. Now, it's at this point where I realized I probably should have done the stamped on the inside of the fence and done the same thing. But on to coloring the pig. I'm going to be using E93 Copic for the main part of the nose for the middle of the nose I believe I used R3 and then to color in the pig's head I'm using Copic marker RV63 and then I'll do a little bit of shading with V3 and the V3 is a hashtag coloring marker from Michaels as well as the R3 that I told you I used for the pig's nose. That's also a hashtag coloring marker that I got from Michaels. The rest of them are Copics. The first three that I used are the chow markers and the RV63 is a sketch marker. So I got those from Hobby Lobby and um, they have them over in the scrapbooking section as well as in the art section. So if you're looking for the markers, they're in two different spots and they have more colors over in the art section than in the scrapbook section. So I just went in and added a little bit of shading to the pig. Again, nothing super fancy, not really um, a great coloring artist, so I just kind of do what I think would look right. Then when I was gluing the pig on with the Zig 2A glue pen, I realized that it would probably be smarter to glue the head of the pig on first and then match the body up. So sometimes I do things backwards and then I realize my mistake. So that's what I did. And I, so I glued the pig down so you'll be able to see the pig on the fence. And that's kind of the part where I probably should have uh, stamped on the back of it so you see the fence. So it looks a little bit more realistic. So now I'm going to glue the piece down again with my ATG gun, which I absolutely love. That will be on an upcoming uh, Tool Crush Tuesday video, I'm sure, because it's one of my favorites. So the last thing I want to do is take the Hello Sentiment and use the same black licorice hybrid ink and stamp it on there. I'm not going to use my Misty because it's a pretty small stamp and it'll be pretty easy to do. I'm going to stamp it down. And then the card is finished. So there's the card for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.